morning to you all. And um, I'm so glad to announce uh, at last my series has come to an end. <laughs> and you might have felt bored reading the loud swear over and over again over the, on the screen. However, thank you so very much, Lydia, uh, for reading the scripture for us uh, uh, this morning. As I told you, we have come to the end of uh, the series. That means we are going to discuss about the last phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, before we go, before we start uh, looking into the Lord's Prayer, I would like to take your opinion uh, for a question. The question will appear on the screen now. So, oh, excuse me, Vijayana, can you please pass my phone? I'm going to share a link in our church WhatsApp group and you please open the link and answer the question you will find once you open the link. Yeah, the link has been shared in the church <laughs> WhatsApp group. Just please open your phones and click the link and answer the question. And those who are not part of uh, the church WhatsApp group, you can open your phone and uh, go to your browser and you can open www.menti.com. M-E-N-T-I, menti.com. So once you open it, it will ask you for a code. Please enter 45339728. I'll repeat 45339728. Two eight. <coughs> the question is, what are the ways to exercise the kingdom, power, and the glory? What are the ways you can exercise the kingdom, power, and glory? I request you all to open your phones and uh, share your opinions since it's not an examination. So there are no wrong answers here. And your answers will pop up on the screen. What are the ways we can experience or exercise the kingdom power and glory? Okay, some said through humility, very good, through justice, very good. And some said to live a life of faith, okay, some said through obedience, through love, through submission and forgiveness. Yeah, please keep your answers coming. By showing love to others, wonderful. By learning about God, that's great. Again, justice, being righteous, proclaiming the promises of God, very good. Being a light for Jesus. Yeah, Jesus came to darkness, so he required some light. Sharing the gospel. Through relationship, through worship. Wonderful. All your answers are really very interesting and um, uh, they, are, they all are good and I greatly appreciate your thoughts. And thank you so very much for participating in the poll and uh, helping me out uh, to continue with my sermon with your opinions. I guess few more uh, responses have come. I guess I'll take the screenshot and put it in the WhatsApp group.
Okay. So, this is the last part of the Lord's Prayer. And the last part of the Lord's Prayer reads in Matthew chapter 9, 6 verse 13, where it is written, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is These are the words that Jesus used to conclude the prayer he was teaching to his disciples. If you observe the Lord's Prayer very clearly, the Lord's Prayer, it starts with doxology. Doxology means, doxa means praise. Opinion, I ask you for your opinion, just like that. Opinion about God, it's about a good opinion about God. It's a praise to God. It is, in other words, worship towards God. So this prayer, it starts with beautiful doxology and this also ends with beautiful doxology this for thine is the kingdom power and glory this is not just part of the prayer but this has been used as a doxology or uh, just like a hymn uh, it was used in the early church that's why you will find this particular phrase not only in this prayer but in some other places as well but in reality uh, in the the Lord spread in the original, in sorry, in the ancient texts and all, we don't find this part added in the prayer, but this part has been added a little later. However, it is completely related to the prayer, uh, and it is always good to meditate on the doxology of the Lord, doxology of God. So it has been added later, but it is absolutely correct. So the Lord's prayer starts with uh, praise, and it's also ends with praise, and these words reminds us that to God belongs the kingdom and the power and the glory. It is said, for thine, for yours is the kingdom, not mine. It is yours is the kingdom, power and glory. And because the kingdom, power and glory belong to you, I have the confidence that whatever I have prayed, it is going to be answered. Whatever we have prayed in the beginning of this prayer will be answered because we know that all the kingdom belongs to God. What is the point of going to a beggar and asking him for a lack of rupees? Because he himself doesn't have to give. What is the point of going to a weak person and ask him to fight for us? It doesn't make any sense because he himself does not have strength. But our God to whom it belongs the, the power belongs to him, the kingdom belongs to him, and the glory belongs to him. Because of that very confidence, we go before him and we pray to him and we have the confidence that our prayers will be answered. Because the kingdom, power, and glory belongs to God, we can still have hope in this corrupted and suffering world. What is the hope we have? Everywhere we see corruption, everywhere we see sickness, death, and we are seeing, so we are hearing so much about the scams which we are not even able to think. The kind of scams that are coming up these days, you know, which are beyond our imagination, isn't it? We are completely surprised and nowadays we are not even able to find what is truth, what is false, what is a scam. So the world has been completely corrupt. The only hope we have, that is God, because to, to him alone belongs the kingdom, power, and glory. And because the kingdom, power, and glory belongs to the Lord, belongs to God, this prayer demands our submission and our surrender because the kingdom, power, glory belongs to God. That, that everybody can understand by the first reading of these words. For thine is the kingdom power and glory. Let us look at these words a little more and uh, try to understand what these are meant and how these things can be, uh, you know, tra translated to us and into our lives and how we can exercise or participate into this kingdom power and glory. That is going to be the focus and direction of my sermon this morning. Kingdom, power, and glory are the three biggest temptations for all of us. Is there anyone here who does not want to have the kingdom? Is there anyone who does not want to have power? Or is there anyone who does not want to have fame here? 
No, all of us, we want to be the superior in the office. We, though we may not be the king of a nation, but at least where we are working in our workplace, we want to be the uh, in the highest position. And we don't want to have somebody on our uh, on top of us, above us. We want to be in the top position. And we want to have power or control. Wherever we go, we want to have control. We want to control people. Nobody should ask questions to us. We all like it. Is there anyone? All of us, we like to have some kind of power. Especially we can see the biggest power struggle within the house. In the marriage, husband should have upper hand or the wife. Should we buy red color fridge or white color fridge? That's where it comes up. You know? So everywhere we want to have power, everywhere we want to exercise some kind of authority and nobody hears glory. We want people praising us. And when people praise, it will be like honey in our ears. We always would like to hear somebody speaking good about us. And this has been the biggest temptation from the beginning of the world. It is not just in this 21st century, but it is there from the beginning when the humanity started living together, when the society has formed, when the civilization started, these are the three big temptations people were having. And these are the three invisible commodities people were seeking for and people have done what not to achieve this. And all the violence in the history took place because People are seeking for kingdom, power, and glory. If you open the history, everywhere we find the kind of violence. Can, can you find any history without any violence? The history is marked with two events. Number one, war, killing. Number two, building and making huge constructions through which their glory can be revealed. Is there anything else apart from these two points in history? Everywhere, in every page, these are the two things we'll find in the history. All the violence that took place because people were seeking for kingdom, power, and then for their own glory. And this history also, it was written by the victors. And they have glorified the bloodshed and the violence. Alexander the Great. Why is he great? Because he conquered the biggest land. Or maximum, the highest number of kingdoms he conquered. In other words, he killed more people than anyone else. Isn't it? He made so many wars and occupied so many countries. And that means he killed millions of people. And whom? what are we calling him? Alexander the Great. So, history was written by the victors. And these victors presented the violence and the glorified violence. And in fact, they worshipped the violence. That also we can say they glorified the bloodshed and violence. Many considered that they are many considered in the history that they are destined to reign. They are born to rule. Unfortunately, the same kind of philosophy is coming into Christian world also. God wants you to reign. God wants you to rule. And there are so many hundreds and thousands of books were written on that. You are destined to reign how you can rule, how you can exercise power. So many think that they, they are destined to reign. But this is not the God's plan uh, that in order to reign, people have to use the means of violence. In the ancient world we see so many kingdoms were made, right? And if you read book of Acts chapter 17, Apostle Paul says that God is the one who drew the boundaries of nations. 
that means uh, he draws the boundaries for every kingdom from somewhere people came and this they came and they what they felt they felt that they are destined to reign and they 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 went for war against other kingdoms and they captured those kingdoms and they're calling them empires kingdoms and nations are god's plan because through kingdoms and nations various cultures are there the diversity is there it's so beautiful to see various diversities are coming together but when one kingdom takes over other kingdom and destroying uh, their people and destroying their cities, trying to destroy their culture, and that is not God's plan. In the Bible, we see God is the one who made the nations. And, and uh, let me tell you, even in book of Revelation, even in chapter 22, you will find all the, the, the words, all the nations, all the tongues, people of all the nations and tongues. God likes the diversity. Even in book of Revelation, you will find this word. And in book of Revelation, you don't even find the word empire. So empire is a concept where one nation comes and uh, or one person, he comes and says, I am destined to reign and uh, I will destroy others and establish my power over there. Babylonians, Assyrians started it. Then Babylonians continued. And then comes Persians. And then comes Greek. And then Romans. So in the history, people, they, they started uh, exploiting other nations and started building their own empires. Those days, it is be directly with uh, uh, fire and blood. But these days are so many other ways we found. World War I, World War II, you know, right? Why? One nation felt or one leader felt they, have, they are destined to reign entire world and other nations. And these days, the wars are not going with uh, fire and blood, economical wars. And uh, we are hearing these um, bioweapons, what, what not, all sorts of things we are hearing that are creating violence and uh, uh, they're destroying other nations in order to exercise kingdom power and glory. But it's never the plan of God that one nation should rule over other nation, calling it empire god likes the diversity but people they are thirsty for this kingdom power and glory here comes jesus he says for to, to you belongs the kingdom power and glory jesus is the one who created entire world all things are created in him through him for him and by him and there is nothing that was created without him he is the one who holds everything together. And he doesn't say all the kingdom belongs to me. But he says, all the when he was a man, he never said the kingdom belongs to me. He said kingdom, power and glory belongs to God, belongs to Father. Let us look. What is the, what is the way that Jesus has shown in order to attain the kingdom, power and glory? Before that, let, let me tell you that even Jesus underwent through the same temptation for kingdom, power, and glory. Just like you and me, Jesus also went through the temptation for kingdom, power, and glory. The moment we talk about temptation, we, 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 we can get to, we can imagine the temptation of Jesus Christ that is recorded in Luke chapter 4, verse 3 to 7. In fact, I wanted to take everything from Matthew but in Matthew, this uh, this, ex this uh, particular uh, incident was explained uh, in many words. So Luke is the shortest form. So I have taken Luke. Otherwise, I wanted to show all the entire sermon through book of Matthew only. Uh, however, so Luke chapter uh, 4, verse 3 to 7, the temptation of Jesus Christ. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. This is a very familiar scripture to all of us. What are the temptations that Jesus is going through? 
the devil tempted him turn this stone to be bread in other words in other word use your power miraculous power which you have to turn this into something that you want for your own sake use this power for your self purpose or manipulate this power and he said all the kingdoms are given to me i will give them to you all the glory was given to me i'll give it to you if you just surrender yourself to me so again jesus here also going through the same temptation for kingdom power and glory in matthew actually it will be in the order but in luke the order is here and there but it will be in the same thing and i'm just i was just wondering when satan came to jesus and was tempting you know if you bow down to me i will give you kingdom power and glory and ji what would jesus must be feeling are you fellow you know what all things are created in him through him for him and by me uh, sorry all created in him in me through me for me and by me and that there, there is nothing that was created without me in fact you are created you know by myself i created you and you are telling me you you all the kingdom glory and power was given to you and you are going to give it back to me i will mean, it must be so funny for jesus to go through these uh, temptations however this temptation was so very powerful for jesus because jesus was also 100% human so the temptations for jesus here are kingdom power and glory and jesus is someone who came here to establish and to proclaim the kingdom of god we all know very well jesus came to establish the kingdom of god and he is go he is the one going to uh, pro proclaim the kingdom of god that is the reason jesus was very badly tempted about with these things only the very purpose jesus came to proclaim the good news the good news about the kingdom to establish the kingdom and the devil is tempting him and one question comes to my mind always who gave authority to devil over this kingdom glory kingdoms and uh, i mean glory who gave did god give no god did not give authority over this kingdom and this glory it is we gave him when we were tempted by the devil and we surrendered ourselves to the te temptations of the devil we have handed over all this kingdom power and glory we submitted into the hands of the devil it is not god who gave him when jesus did not say any word that does not mean uh, <coughs> he was a many people still think that kingdom power glory belongs to satan and satan is the lord of this world because there are verses few verses written here those verses are not literally saying that the kingdoms belong to god sir the kingdoms belong to satan those are the words to explain the world is corrupt and it is completely controlled now corrupted by the devil that's what that's what he, the authors meant to say but this kingdom power this kingdom power and glory were not given to devil at any time but we have given those things we have given authority to devil over us we have given our kingdoms to devil but not god god did not give that's why i feel when G while when Sa satan was tempting to tempting jesus about these three things i feel jesus must be laughing at satan you think these things are given to you and he must be laughing within himself however having said that uh, we will we we'll like to we will we'll move forward so here jesus came to establish the kingdom he came to proclaim the kingdom he is the one who have the authority and all and he is being tempted for the kingdom power and glory and jesus came to establish the kingdom only very simple thing if you bow down to the devil the kingdom would have been established because devil said i will give it to you right jesus would have just bowed down so that the glory may be given to him so that he does not go through all the sufferings that he underwent the very purpose he came to establish the kingdom right but he did not choose that way 
many argue that means are justified by sorry not uh, but but uh, so no, that's a typing error it's not but it's a by means are justified by the end results that's why people say everything is fair in love and war whatever you do in love in the name of love and war it is fair <laughs> okay you know you throw the uh, morals into uh, you know nile and do whatever you want to do in the name of love and war it will be accepted it doesn't matter how, what path you have taken it only matters whether you have reached the destination or not but in reality means define who we are the means we use to reach the destination they define who we are here jesus came to establish the kingdom and the devil offered a means bow down to me i'll give all this to you he can choose but he did not choose because that is the wrong means of achieving the kingdom and the means always matters and they define who we are and most of the times what we do is we read this temptation of jesus christ over literally which makes it cartoonish actually think about the incident that jesus was tempted it almost looked like a cartoon story but in reality when he said when devil said bow down to me i'll give all this kingdom power and glory what he really means is the means here are politics and war and miraculous power when jesus said bow down to me when devil said bow down to me i'll give you all this is choose the way of war i will be your side i'll kill everyone i'll give you the kingdom choose the way of politics i'll bring all these people in your favor and you can establish your kingdom choose to use your miraculous power here i'll bring everyone to be submitted to your miraculous power is it not what happened throughout the history when people have chosen one of these means in order to exercise kingdom power and authority and have brought all the violence and bloodshed into the world and this was the means the devil was offering to jesus and jesus did not buy it he did not choose to establish his kingdom with politics he did not choose to establish his kingdom with war he did not choose to establish his kingdom through his miraculous power those are the three things devil tempted he uh, he did not give himself to it let us see how the devil was tempted again in his life Matthew chapter uh, sorry John chapter 6 verse 15 Jesus fed 5000 people after feeding therefore when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king he departed again to the mountains by himself alone here comes thousands of people were following Jesus because he used his miraculous power to feed 5000 people so they have seen him using the miraculous power and they wanted to make him king this is nothing but politics when people come and follow what, what does the politicians do here in order to find uh, following first thing politicians do find following is go and do some charitable work or feed few few people then people will be following them isn't it even here in india also same things happen so when jesus performed this miracle thousands of people were following him forcefully they wanted to make him a king so this is a way this is a place where he was tempted to become a king or to establish his kingdom by the politics but did jesus use no what did he do immediately he left the place and went in went into a solitary place another place Matthew chapter 26 verse 53 uh here when uh, the soldiers came to arrest Jesus some of one of the disciples they have taken sword and tried to attack 
the soldiers. You know the incident very well, right? So there Jesus was saying, or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father that he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Here again the temptation. Army came to catch Jesus and one of their disciples started the war. Jesus can call angels and can establish the war and kill people. Here another temptation. He has to kill them otherwise they will kill him. Again, a huge temptation to go for to go for what? What did Jesus do? The Jesus did not submit himself to this temptation, but he surrendered himself to people's violence. And you all know how it ended up. And another place, Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 to 42. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, there the chief priest also came and the, then chief priests were talking to Jesus. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking with the scribes and elders and said, he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, see again the same words, if he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Again the temptation here. Come down from the cross and establish and use your miraculous power here. You save yourself and you save the people around. And then one of the thieves said, if you are the son of God, you save yourself and save us. Again the temptation here. You come down and you save yourself. We will believe that, uh, sorry, and we will believe that you are the king of Israel. Very simple. Jesus would have done that. Am I right? If he had come down from this uh, cross, all these people might have believed him that he is the king. But he did not buy this temptation again. So the three temptations, what devil spoke, the three temptations again, Jesus also was going. These are just three incidents I am bringing to you. But if you read the Gospels, entire Gospel, you will find the same kind of uh, incidents, which tells that Jesus was tempted to use war, to use politics, to use his miraculous power to attain the kingdom or to establish his kingdom power and glory. But that is not the way Jesus chose. Jesus chose another way. What is the way that Jesus has chosen? And he is the one through whom or through, sorry, all things are created in him, through him, by him and for him. And he is the head of all things. But he prays kingdom power and glory belongs to the Father. In all these incidents where very easily he could capture the kingdom power and glory, he did not use any of them, but he prayed to you, O Father, all these three kingdom power glory belongs. He submitted to the Father. He did not use any of these uh, methods and temptations for himself. But what is the method that Jesus has used? The answer can be found in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, but did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to even the death of the cross. What is the way that Jesus has chosen? The way Jesus has chosen was emptying himself. The way Jesus has chosen was giving up the power. Because if you take, if you try to go after the power, power will be leader, power will be ruling you instead of you will be using the power. The power will be using you. So he gave up the power. He gave up the authority. He kept his glory aside and he humbled himself. He became a man like you and me, though he is he is God and he is he, he I mean he is qualified to consider himself as God but he humbled himself and became like you and me he was the foot of the disciples and we find it very difficult to do that but he chose the way of humility he was the foot of the disciples and even he chose himself to give himself to the violence rather than killing violence with another violence we all say if they are attacking, we also should, we, we should retaliate. 
when people were, were attacking Jesus, he did not retaliate, but he submitted himself. Isaiah chapter 53, it shows, and Isaiah chapter 59 explains how he submitted himself to this violence. The method he chose is not the violence, but humility. The method he chose was surrender. The method he chose was suffering. He suffered. He went to the point of death, the death on the cross. So the way Jesus chose to establish and exercise these three is through sufferings. We heard Greg Williams also was speaking about sufferings. Okay, Jesus did not say, Jehovah Zireh, my provider, all, will, uh, all things will be provided to me. So let angels come <laughs> and kill these people. <laughs> no, he did not use that. He chose the way of humility, the way of servanthood, the, uh, obedience and suffering on the cross. This is the way that Jesus chose to achieve. And that is why we can see in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 to 23, uh, one of the incidents is, which is very uh, familiar. He is the one, he chose this way and he taught the same way. When, <laughs> when the mother of uh, Sons of Thunders, John and Jebedee, when they came, the mother of uh, these two disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand, the other on the left in your kingdom. Why? What is that somebody sitting on the right means? What is somebody sitting on the left means? It means grant my children power, authority and glory. In other words, right hand means like the home minister. Okay. Left hand means like the finance minister. Okay. And may, sitting main is like the president or prime minister. That's how it works. So right hand always means very powerful, the power. And so uh, the mother of the sons of thunder asked Jesus, grant my children kingdom, power and glory. What did Jesus say? But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup I am about to drink? What is the cup he was about to drink? The same cup he prayed, Father, please remove it if it is your will. What is that cup? The cup of suffering. Are you able to drink? And uh, are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, we are able. They thought. So they, they did not understand all. That's why they said, we are able to do that. And in fact, they did it. Not now, but after the Holy Spirit came upon them in their lives, they gave their lives to Jesus. But when they said we are able to do it, they did not understand a single word Jesus said to them. So he said to them, you will, uh, he, he was thinking in his mind, you think that you already understood and you are able to do, but you are not able to do. But anyway, I don't want to discourage you now. So Jesus was changing the words and he said, he said, uh, he can simply say when they said, yes, okay, you sit in my right and left, but he did not do that. He said, you will indeed drink my cup and baptize with the baptism that I am baptized with. Because Jesus knows in the future they are going to do it. But to sit on my right hand or on my left hand is not mine. Here also Jesus can say, like, he, is he anything less than the father? No, he is equal with the father. He says, this is not in my hand. In other words, he is true to his words. To, the, to you belongs the kingdom, power and glory. And he did not take the authority on his own. He said, um, but to sit on my right hand, on my left, is not mine to give. But it is for those for whom it prepared by my father. Again, he says, it is the father who, to whom this kingdom, power and glory belongs. Jesus, he followed, he chose the way of suffering and humility and he taught his disciples the way of humility and suffering. He never took kingdom power glory into his own hands. He gave all these things to, to the Father and Jesus suffered the cross for us. We all know. 
But sometimes we think that Jesus suffered the cross for us, so we don't need to suffer any cross. But if you look at the, the words of Jesus, we understand that Jesus suffered the cross for us, but he challenged us to carry our own cross and follow him. In other words, he chose the way of suffering and uh, humility, and he challenged us to choose the same way which he chose. And the way Jesus chose was the cross. The way of Christ is the way of cross. That is why this way of cross is so very powerful. There may be any method which may fail. But this method, this way, the way of the cross will never fail. How can we say that? The result is very evident and has been explained in book of Ephesians, uh, sorry, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, where Apostle Paul says, Therefore God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of, the, of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus humbled himself and we read this verse. Actually, this is part of the verse which we read already. He humbled himself. Though he is equal to God, he humbled himself. And uh, he humbled himself to die. And even to the point of death, he, sorry, even he, uh, even the death on the cross, because he humbled himself, it is written here, God has highly exalted him. Because Jesus has chosen the way of the suffering and the cross, God has highly exalted. And first part you said, highly exalted, that is talking about the glory. And then here we can see that uh, every knee should uh, bow before him and every tongue should confess, what? That Jesus he is Lord. In other words, Jesus is the King. And then, for the glory of God. The kingdom, power and glory. Jesus said, they belong to you, Father. And he submitted himself to God and even to human violence. And at what happened? At the end, now the kingdom, power and glory were been granted to Jesus. That's why, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, it is written, let all, those, uh, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both the Lord and Christ. This is the preaching from Apostle Peter. First sermon uh, in book of Acts. God humbled himself and you killed him. God raised him from the dead. Now he is being seated at the right hand of the Father. Now the kingdom, power and glory belongs to Jesus. That's what they heard. That's why when they heard the preaching of Jesus, their heart were torn. They were scared because the kingdom, power and glory now, they belong to Jesus. And what is the proof of it? The proof of Jesus' lordship is the miracle that happened in that incident. In, I'm talking in, in the context of Acts chapter 2 to 4. They preach that Jesus is the Lord. What is the proof? The miracles happened there. The power of God has been revealed over there. So kingdom, power and glory, they belong to Christ. That is the way that Christ has chosen. And that is why in uh, he, he was given authority. And, and as Matthew says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 10 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. What is the first word Jesus said? As he is living and he as he was ascending to heaven, all the authority was given to me. Who said this word before? The devil said. Devil thought all authority was given to him. In fact, he doesn't have, but he was just bluffing. But here comes Jesus who said, all authority belongs to my father. And he chose the way of lowly. He chose the way of suffering on the cross. And now he is saying, all authority has been given to me. All the kingdom, power, glory are given to me. 
And uh, that's why in book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 16, we find that he has on the road. This is talking about uh, uh, Jesus. John gives the description of Jesus. And he has on his robe, robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And you all have watched the opening video. It is talking who Jesus is. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because he chose the way of suffering, he was given the kingdom, power, and glory. Then I ask the question, how can we exercise or experience the kingdom, power, and glory? That is the way of Jesus. How can we exercise that? Do we need to go and get crucified? No. We don't need to be beaten 39 times. We don't need to be crucified. We need, of course, we, as Apostle Paul said, let this mind be also in you, the mind of humility. We ought to take the way of Jesus. Having said that, what are the ways we can participate in the kingdom, power, and glory? We participate in the kingdom, power, and glory by doing what he said, which is making disciples. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So go and make disciples. Hey, let me tell you, for example, you have become the friend of prime minister. Okay, how can you ex exercise the power of prime minister? Very simple. When Prime Minister passes a geo or he passes a rule and you are the one who is going to implement it, you are exercising the power of the Prime Minister. Why government officials, they have so... Everybody gets scared of government officials, right? Everybody respect and respect police. Why? Is it because just they have guns? No. Why? Because they have power. What is the Whose power is that? Is it the power of the police? No. That is the power of the government. Government gave them the power because they are doing what government said. So, one way of exercising power of the king is be doing what the king said. When you go and do what the king said with a decree that you have, not degree, decree, or the come uh, geo that he passed, you are exercising his authority. Ha holding the seal of the king holds great power. We all know about it, isn't it? The seal of the king, that is the Holy Spirit. It is on our hearts now. When we go and do what the king said, we will be exercising the power. That is disciples. disciples. When we make disciples, we will exercise the power of uh, sorry the kingdom power and the glory that's why apostle paul also says um, uh, speaks about the gospel and uh, why why making disciples is exercising the power of the kingdom power and glory of jesus and he gives a reason in romans chapter 1 verse 16 he talks about Gospel and he says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. If you want to experience the power of God, go to the gospel. There is no 10 step methods to experience the power of God. Where you have to fast and pray for, uh, 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 you know, weeks and weeks. If you want to exercise the power of God in your life, take the gospel. Because gospel, good news, is the power of God, which brings salvation to Jews and then to Gentiles and to everyone in this world. A lot of people say, I want to receive the power of God and do all sorts of circus. You, uh, you know what I'm talking about. There is only one way you can experience the power of God. That is when the gospel is in your heart and the gospel is in your mouth. When you speak about the gospel, you will experience the power of God. Anytime you got scared of anything, go find a friend. Talk about Jesus. 
the moment you talk about jesus the moment you talk about the gospel what happens you will definitely experience the power of god i challenge you with this for sure you want to experience the power of god talk about jesus if you don't talk about jesus you won't experience the power of god many of us who are in established churches and all are not able to experience the power as other uh, most happening churches which are growing are experiencing is because we don't talk about jesus anywhere they are talking about jesus that's why they are experiencing some kind of power when you talk about jesus and the gospel you will experience the same and regarding the glory Romans chapter 10 verse 15 which is a quote from Isaiah Apostle Paul quotes and says how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good news of glad glory how can you exercise glory God reveal your glory to me we talk about we pray right reveal your glory to me reveal your glory in my life reveal your glory in my family life the only way God reveals his glory is when you talk about Jesus. If you talk about Jesus, the glory will be revealed. And he said, how beautiful are the feet of the people who take the gospel. Church, I would like to remind you, let us wake up. Let us wake up and it's a, it's a high time for us to exercise the kingdom, power and glory of God, which we can do by talking and doing and sharing the message of the gospel, message of Jesus, message of his love. When we do that, then only we'll be able to exercise his power, kingdom, power and glory. When we do that, then only we will experience the life even inside the church. Until we do that, our church will not be able to experience the life and we will be just like a, like a thing. We will not be growing and we will not be living. We should be talking about Jesus. We have to wake up. It's high time for us. Are we sharing the gospel? As a church, we experience the kingdom power and glory when we share the gospel. As uh, Unless we share the gospel, we won't be able to do that. Let me ask you this question. How can you share the gospel? You may tell me, uh, Praveen, you know, the, the world around us is so very difficult, you know, dangerous now. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who are not liking our faith. They're creating so many difficulties. I understand. And we have a baggage. That's why we are not going and talking about Jesus to anyone. I understand. A lot of us, we have so many reasons to say that we are not able to talk about Jesus. Let me ask a very simple thing. You may not be an eloquent preacher to go and preach. It's okay. A simple thing you can do. Just take your mobile and share one of our Sunday messages to someone. We have, a, we have so much of con content in YouTube. So many of our messages are there. Have you ever done that? Have you ever thought of sharing the Sunday sermons and Wednesday Bible studies are being uploaded in the church group? We have around 200 plus videos did you ever share anything to anyone in whatsapp it doesn't cost you and you don't need to show your face and explain all theology uh, etymology or what all you are talking you don't need any of, of these ologies you just need to share this we have so many booklets here have you ever thought of taking and sharing giving it to someone I would like to encourage you, church. By God's grace, we have created quite a bit of content which is related, which is talking about the love of Jesus in a very powerful manner. I encourage you, at least start sharing it. Church becomes alive when, you, when church talks about Jesus. Unless we talk about Jesus, we won't be alive. Because he is the life. So in conclusion, what I would like to say, this prayer reminds us to recognize the kingdom, power and glory that belong to God. And this demands our submission and surrender. How can we submit and surrender if we don't do what the king said? What kind of submission and surrender is this? 
and Jesus established and achieved the kingdom power and glory through humility and the cross and we ought to choose the same way. And we ought to carry our cross and follow Jesus because we are the people who chose the way of Jesus. And we experience the kingdom power and glory when we share the gospel and when we make disciples. And there is no other way. And we are not called to establish his kingdom power and glory through politics or through war or through anything. But with a very simple thing. That is the gospel. Talk about Jesus. I encourage you to talk about Jesus personally so that you may experience the power of Christ. I encourage the church to talk about Jesus so that the church may exercise the power of Christ. Shall we all stand having these an understanding and can shall we all uh, do, I mean, pray the Lord's prayer, acknowledging that kingdom, power and glory that belongs to God alone and with a desire to exercise and experience the kingdom, power and glory in the way that Jesus has cho chosen, has shown us and by talking about him, about his love and the gospel. Let us pray this prayer together with a heart to experience, desire to experience the kingdom, power and glory. Not just nominally, but meaningfully. Let us do this prayer. We studied the entire prayer and so many thoughts we have brought in this prayer. I do believe that you have in them, you have them in your mind. Having them in mind, let us pray sincerely. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let all say, Amen. Thank you.